from beautiful downtown Burbank. NBC, the national babbling company, trembles under the strain of timidity and nevertheless presents Roman and Martin's Laugh-In 25th Anniversary Special. <laughs> oh. been friends of the show and have been supportive of the show since our first show and just thank you collectively and it brought back a lot of memories and I'm sure it will for you when you see some of these people okay first of all we've got uh, uh, one announced that there's no truth to the rumor that Goldie Hawn is replacing David Letterman we're gonna get away with that we are all kind of sad that half of the title of the show can't be with us for our anniversary we've lost Dan Rowan but we still have his partner the man who made swinging an Olympic event, <laughs> Dick, Dick Martin. He was going to ride in on a motorcycle, but Leno already did it. <laughs> the adorable half of Rowan and Martin. Yeah. And Dick, if you want to jump in here anywhere, you've got a live mic up there. there you go. I just want to point out one thing. We just posed for a picture with the head of NBC now and the head of NBC when we did the show, Herb Slosser and Warren Littlefield, and for a picture for The Hollywood Reporter. And just before we posed for the picture, Dick said, oh, I can't be, guess whose glass, oh, the glass is gone. Uh, oh, no, okay, somebody I took drank it. it. Okay, good. Anyway, <laughs> we'd like for you now to meet the poet laureate of Laugh-In, Henry Gibson, by Henry Gibson. <laughs> And Burbank's answer, Burbank's answer to Cary Grant, our own leading man, the best impression of Joanne Worley ever, Alan Seuss. <laughs> Alan. That's it, that you little, you little darling. And now, a truly unique gentleman who came to beautiful downtown Burbank by way of London. He worked both as a performer and a writer, and he's gone on to become an enormous star in the British Isles. And he also did, this is the tallest man on the show, and he played Toulouse Lautrec, who was, I don't know how he ever did it, but anyhow, Jeremy Lloyd. Come here, Jeremy. Yeah, see? Je Jeremy arrived in Hollywood and became quite a ladies' man, which wasn't easy with Dick in the vicinity. And he would call and he said, George, I'm terribly sorry, I'm going to be late for Monday's meeting. And this was Monday already. I said, well, Jeremy, where are you? He said, Acapulco. This is true, this is true. true George. Anyhow, and... I'd like for you to meet the man who created and wrote the special material, performed on Laugh-In. He also occasionally appeared on camera. He's a star of a long, long time with musicals. Billy, Bar Billy Barnes. Billy. Okay. Billy. Well, oh, there he is. Okay. And, of course, the megastar who brought his own brand of music and magic and mayhem and musical genius to Laugh-In, our own adorable Tiny Tim. Tiny. Yeah. He, he, he couldn't, no truth to the he room couldn't find a costume. <laughs> so sure know how to him. sneak into a room tiny. <laughs> no truth to the rumor that that is Tim Conway's illegitimate son. <laughs> anyway, and uh, now wait. Now, for some of the ladies, the Laugh-In, the ladies made Laugh-In what it was, I think. And uh, we were important. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's very 
great, George. Keep that up. Anyhow, we would. <laughs> <laughs> laughing, laughing was, was fun because of these women. This was long before women's lip, but if anybody tells you that women didn't run the show, they are lying to you. Anyhow, and here's one lady that was responsible for all of us being able to move out of the valley into Beverly Hills, Goldie Hunt. Goldie, <laughs> there, yes. There, there, it's the one with your name on it. There you go. We went downstairs and we were doing some, some things into camera a little while ago and it brought back oh, some it? memories for all of oh, us. Oh, God. Uh, take 42, take 43. <laughs> <laughs> and one day, one day we received a picture, Dick, remember? One day we received a picture in the mail of a woman in a, in a trash basket, right? And, uh, and we said, we have to meet this woman. Anyhow, it was Gladys Ormsby. And we were surprised, surprised when the woman came in because she was very, very attractive and adorable and sat down in our Xerox room at a small spinet piano and accompanied herself on her own composition of Don't Futz Around. <laughs> <laughs> and she had the job then. Where's Ruth Buzzy? Ruth. Come here, Ruth. Are these mics on up here in case anybody wants to? Uh, people. Huh? Now they're on. Oh, I forgot. I forgot the voice of Laughing, the man who did all of the uh, the voices and the introductions and whatever, who we met in a in a men's room at the smokehouse in Burbank, and and he was standing in the men's room. He said, "Well, hello, George." And I said, "Damn that voice!" So I said, so he spent the next six years with his thumb in his ear. <laughs> Gary Owens, come on, Gary. And then, a girl who was one of the first people that we hired on Laughing. She came in, she sang a song, she did a Pratt fall, and survived a marriage to Burt Reynolds. <laughs> and uh, anyhow, some of you know, we're lucky to get, she was our socket to me girl, and we called her our stunt runt, Judy Karn. Come on, Judy. <laughs> that, was, that was close enough. You were close. <laughs> That's as close as we're going to get, That's Judy. Right. Yeah. I'm trying to behave tonight now, George. <laughs> Judy just came from England this morning, and uh, it's really good to see him. I mean, good to see us all back together. I know, isn't it exciting? Yeah. And That's the first the guest star who you. appeared on Laugh In, and, and she was a big star at that point, and she did a lot of commercials, <laughs> and she was uh, in the uh, Get Smart series, and won all kinds of Emmys and everything. And uh, she was dumbfounded when she read the script, and she just read the script, and she then, she was still bewildered when we taped the show, and we talked to her tonight, and she still doesn't know exactly what it was that we did on the show, but she had a good time. And it was the sexiest voice that ever hit Burbank, Barbara Feldman. Come on, Barbara. Right. Agent yeah. 09, yeah. yeah. And a girl who started out as a dancer, and we met, and she came on Laugh-In and added a tremendous amount of energy and whatever. And then she stayed for a while and went to Australia, where she went on to become a big star. And she flew all the way back today to be with us. Chelsea Brown. Chelsea. And one, other, one other girl who's the greatest tap dancer and every week she did a weekly tribute to uh, Spiro Agnew and was, and was never investigated, which I think is... <laughs> and we were sick, we never got on the enemies list. That was the only, the only disappointment of the whole series, we never made the enemies list. We were close. <laughs> Anyhow, here's Barbara Sharma. And also, one more. First time, first time I saw this girl was in New York at the Ed Sullivan Theater, and she was uh, performing a barefoot tap dance. And it was the last normal thing I ever saw her do. <laughs> and she's here. She was a little late, but she's here. Lily Tomlin.
What, what we thought we might do now, because this is the first time we've all been together, like I said, in 25 years, but some of you may have some questions, and uh, why don't you just go ahead and, and see what it is you'd like to know. And then uh, if we think of anything in the meantime, we'll ask it too. Go. A quick question for uh, Goldie. Hi, down here. 25 years ago, it was a different world, a different business. What have you learned of yourself and of the business in that time? That is the most <laughs> demanding personal question. <laughs> Take it out. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You're asking me to go through 25 years of my own personal discovery? <laughs> One thing. Um, God, is it anything I learned from laughing or just like from the mistakes I made? You choose. What? You, you choose. choose. I choose. Basically, what I learned was <laughs> it's had a to laugh. be, uh, yeah, it's had a laugh, uh -huh. is to be uh, faithful to basically my own values, to what it is I believe in and what I will not betray uh, yeah. in terms of who I am. Well, right. Good answer, okay, we're, learned, we're over here. She learned that from Wait. you, George. Yeah, oh, I, thought I, had a, I had a class in that, okay? Come on in. What? If you could time travel, would you want to go back to the show, or are you satisfied where you are? Yeah. No, let's go oh. forward. Go Who's forward. that for? I would love to go oh. back to the show. Who I know lost you, Ruth. <laughs> no, she said anyone. Anyway. Anyway. She said anyone. Anyway. <laughs> I'm quite happy where I am. I think uh, laughing was a wonderful experience for me, but I think it's added a uh, dimension that. Um, I just carried on with me, and I happen to be very satisfied where I am now. There's a lot that's happened, and I like the layers that I've put up on myself. And uh, with all due respect, George, I don't think I can get in, I don't think I can get into that bikini anyway. Anybody you were just else? glad to put clothes on. Anybody else? And a man who worked on the show, like from the very, very beginning, came up with the title "Laugh In" and lurked, worked over there at the uh, Toluca Capri Motel where we had all of these writers and scouts, and they used to be getting raids, and the stories about them are hysterical. But the man who worked in the beginning and worked tirelessly on a lot of the things is here tonight, he came back. He's teaching a professor now in, uh, in Albuquerque. Where's Digby Wolf? Where's Digby? There, there he is. And he looks, he looks as good today as he did then, and we had a few laughs. Yes, yes. Question for Dick Martin. Uh, what was your first reaction when you came out here tonight and you saw all your laugh-in cohorts with you? I was kind of surprised they were all uh, still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Been a while. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. I agree. <laughs> Not one of them has changed. Every one of them looks like they just came off the set of Laugh-In. <laughs> they are marvelous. Oh, thanks, Dick. Do you have a particular memory about the an episode or an installment or yes, there something was a girl in the cocktail party, but I can't go into that. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of girls in the cocktail party. Oh, yeah. We have we have another okay. one here. We Dick go right Martin, here. Dear boy, um, even with the stellar group, a great, a tremendous stellar group, Dan is greatly missed tonight. Yes, yes. right. Yeah, yes. Dick, can you give us an inkling of what he brought to the show? Oh. He was very protective of all of us. Um, <laughs> he was. <laughs> Alan says he was the pivotal point. <laughs> the pivotal point. That's not dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Dick, you were part of the team. Would you tell us what he brought to the show? Uh, he brought a great deal of class. Yes. That's right. And uh, he brought a a great deal of know-how uh, to keep things moving. He did that with me for 25 years mm. and was very good at it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. For anybody you'd like to answer up there, right in front of you here in the center, uh, Laugh-In was very much a child of its time, it seems. Do you think in the world the way it is today, a Laugh-In could work in 1993? Absolutely. Sure. I think it's almost sure. Sure. I think it's essential, yes. actually. Nobody's having any fun anymore. No, no one's laughing enough. Well, you know, Saturday Night Live really did kind of pick up on those, on those yeah. current issues. Unfortunately, it's on very late at night 
what would be nice would be able to have some fun with all the truisms that were going yeah. on and, yeah. Yeah. and what we were able to do on prime time so young people can become as enlightened as we were. <laughs> <laughs> with, la with laughter, lots of laughter. Yeah, lots of laugh. We did get to see an awful lot of the stuff that was on the Monday night, or the Monday morning reading, uh, because Lorne Michaels was one of our writers for the last two years. And we'd say, gee, I wish we could do that, but you can't do that at 8 o'clock mm -hmm. at night. Mm -hmm. And we saw it pop up at 1 o'clock in the morning about two years later. And it was all good stuff, and we wish we could have done it. Dan, could you say something about how you and Dick got together? Uh, as adventurous on television as Laughing was during its time? I haven't seen anything uh, adventurous on television uh, in the last 20 years. Uh, maybe that was cute. Yeah, that was cute. Dick, could you say something about how you and Dan originally met and got together, and, and also about how, how the show got started? Well, that was a lot longer than 25 years ago for Dan and I. Mm -hmm. Dan and I got together back in the early 50s and played nightclubs for 15 years before we uh, encountered this mad group. <laughs> could you say something about how you originally, the two of you originally got together? How did that happen? Uh, we were introduced by a chap that probably isn't known here now named Tommy Noonan. And it was a team, a comedy team, called Noonan and Marshall. Right, Peter Marshall. As yeah. Peter Marshall and Tommy Noonan. And uh, he introduced us. And nine days later, we broke an act in at Charlie Foy's Supper Club, which is also burned down, as I recall. <laughs> uh, I'd like to ask the woman who asked the question. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, about the interval dialectics of uh, <laughs> life learning. Excuse me, uh, do you have any dental floss? Bring that all right. Yeah, we have one right here. Goldie. Uh, qu question for Tiny what? Tim. Go do, do it again. Go question for Tiny Tim. Yeah. It appears you've still sure. got that psychedelic look. Uh, uh -huh. do, do you feel more comfortable these days or in the era of the 60s? Well, that's a good question, and before I answer that, I, since you asked me a question, I want to say one thing right now. No matter what they say, the laughing was important to every one of us. It brought us here today. It brought the career in the, in the TV screens, in the movie screens, for many of these great stars. No one here can really pass it by lightly. It was our step to success, number one. All right. Number two. In answer to that question, what was that again? I would like to uh, sign for <laughs> Tiny Tim. It was about, for those of you who are hard of hearing. <laughs> it was something about dental floss. <laughs> See a drip of that. We have one here. Goldie. Uh, Goldie. Goldie. Goldie, I remember you won the Oscar while you were on Laugh-In. What was the reaction from the rest of the cast? I know there was a real funny bit where you came on with the, the robe and the, the scepter and the crown and all that, but what was the reaction from them off camera? They were pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were really jealous. We were furious. Everybody How was dare she go and get an Oscar? <laughs> and it was... It was <laughs> It was a role I really could have played, too. <laughs> you were too tall for that. Okay. And, we got, and we got another one. Could, okay, yes. Um, I would like to ask for an answer to a question that was previously asked, and that is, who would you like to sock it to today? Could, could we really have some answers to that? It's too late for Reagan, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think right now we're kind of in a period of optimism. And I don't know if there's anybody to really want to sock it to now. Somehow I yeah. feel like we're yeah. entering into a new era of hope. Yeah, it's and too negative to think about. Yeah, yeah. it is. Absolutely. I mean, we're, it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, but that's really true. <laughs> it's true. What? Lily? My Lily, about you're on. socking it to someone? Sure. Well, I've always held a more demure stance. So. <laughs> 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 I've or, I used to try to heal this group, even. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, 
try another me, question that was asked can I, earlier. Can I answer? Here. Yes. Uh, can I answer uh, that question? Uh, one one second. I, I'd like to talk to my first wife, Miss Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you already did that, Tim. <laughs> did he did? He oh, did well, too. He did it? too, Tim. Don't I? Right, yes. Where? Right here. Um, I think it would be interesting to hear from, from uh, as many of you as would like to comment on what the show did mean to your, to your lives. Obviously, it meant a lot, but, but uh, it, I think it would be very interesting to hear that. Mm. Lily, how about you? What, what did well, uh, laughing was everything for me because I, uh, I was totally unknown when I went to the show, and I had, uh, didn't even want to go on television because I... I didn't think I would be good on television, and I had some romantic idea about being a stage actress and living on, on the East Village the rest of my life. And, uh, and, and the kinds of things I did, I was, I was obsessed with making monologues and stuff, and I did that all the time, and I'd go to the improv, but it never dawned on me to become uh, really famous. I really just wanted to, to do what I did, and uh, I guess I wanted to uh, um, have this uh, live purely. <laughs> Yay. And then I met George. <laughs> and I, I went to see George because I'd gone to see people in the past, you know, and I would do certain characters and things. And this was like the early middle 60s, and people would like sort of shrink back in horror and, uh, or move their chair further back from me, you know. And uh, then I went to see George, and in fact, I'd heard so much about him. And, I, uh, and, I, and I, one thing I regret, to, I have two things I regret in my career. One is that I didn't go naked to my interview with George. Me too. <laughs> I, was, I had it in my mind because I'd heard so much about him. He was supposed to be such a wild man, you know. And I was going to go in like in a real demure, you know, cloth coat with a fur collar and, and a kind of, you know, maybe a little, a little cloche with, the, you know, I mean, a little, I mean a little spring hat with some fun and a nice handbag, maybe. <laughs> and then I thought I'd, you know, take my coat off and hang it up and sit down with gloves on and everything and then have an interview. <laughs> I think you should do it now. <laughs> I think that's, that's, that's great. That's, <laughs> first negotiation would have been a lot easier. <laughs> what have you got to lose? Go for it. <laughs> anyway, so I got to do Ernestine and George saw everything I did. George embraced me. He was it's totally expansive and and I did Ernestine, you know, and all I and I went in the show in the third season and everybody was famous and and I was scared to death, and I thought it was like going to a new school, and then they, everybody, but they were all famous and happy and, you know, and uh, pulling down big bucks. And, uh, <laughs> and they were in a top yeah, five right. show, and it was fabulous. You know, the spirit on the show was just, a, just wacky and fun and all that silly stuff. And, and I went and I did Ernestine, and I didn't even, I didn't go on the air for weeks and weeks, and then I finally went on the air, and literally I was famous overnight. I mean, Ernestine was famous overnight, and so, yeah. and George warned me, he said, uh, he said, now you're gonna, wait till we air, the first time we air, because I had no idea that Ernestine would be so popular. And um, he said, you're gonna, he said, something's gonna happen, Ernestine is really gonna be famous, and it's never gonna happen that way again. And um, anyway, it was a great time. But it time. did, Edith Ann. Yeah. Well, yeah. not really. Oh, I mean, well, I mean well, Edith Ann was fame, popular, but I'm saying that first time you have it, that first, you know, you don't even quite get it. But, uh, but the fun of being on the show, and it was all, we worked like hell, though, I have to tell you that. I mean, Dan and Dick came in about two hours on Wednesday. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Yay, Lily. I... And we were... We had to, we had to no, try we never it. held it against them. <laughs> <laughs> we had the wardrobe alone. We had to like try and we'd have racks and racks of clothes from Orbacks, you know, and we'd have to. Uh, <laughs> and it's exhausting to try on those clothes. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. You had to clean your hair's all sticking all over the place <laughs> and big old turtleneck oh, sweaters. Wow. And, and we'd go through each other's racks. We'd run down there, try to steal. For, I'd try to steal from someone else's rack. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, that was our whole lives. I mean, we did. We worked, and we had a load of fun, and that's I, all there was to it. I should point out that when we talk about costumes, hundreds of costumes used to come in and out of that building. Mm -hmm. And some of them we bought, and we rented, and whatever. But the man who designed all of the clothes the whole time that Laughlin was on the air, the news songs and all of those things is here, Michael Travis. Michael. Yeah. And also, also with us is the man who did, who did all of the music and the arrangements and conducted and, and would write things like the titles of the songs that were the background music with Bible Chase and uh, uh, Funky Funk and stuff. And, uh, Ian Bernard. 
And the man who, the man who directed this, which is like a lion tamer, with all of this stuff going on, uh, is Mark Warren. He's with us, too, Mark. You've got George. another question, okay. I'm totally, I wonder if you could do the same thing, sort of a memory of what, what the show meant to you and your memories of, of that. Where are you? Right here. Oh, okay. Uh, well, it was a weird thing for me because I didn't have an act and I didn't write and I didn't do anything except dance and sing a little and act a little, really. And I went in to meet George kind of, I don't know, he saw me on a show, right? And. Uh, yeah, on an Andy Griffith special, and I was dancing, and um, he, I was a dancer on that show. And then he called me in to do this interview, and I did an interview with him, and I still didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> and I didn't know what to tell him I could do uh, for that show, but he said, I'll give you three chances, and th I did three shows, you know, and uh, he had me read off of a teleprompter uh, because we, you know, we didn't know what to do with me. And uh, <laughs> so I, I read off the teleprompter and I got mixed up. So I laughed and I said, now could you go back? And he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're not going to go back, Goldie. That's fine. Just keep on going. And I got more and more befuddled. And uh, I started realizing that I was either going to look like a real ass or I was going to, you know, something was going to come of this character. And uh, that's kind of how it, it happened. And it was all a great surprise to me because it's like, you know, my mom would say to me, I don't really think you're funny. And I'd say, well, I don't really think I'm funny either. <laughs> but yet everybody else thought I was funny. So it, it took uh, uh, some real soul searching to try to understand, uh, A, who I am and what it is that made me funny. And George, of course, um, over the years was like inside of me. He, he knew me. He knew, he knew what made me laugh, which is a very intimate thing to share with someone. Um, and it was the greatest three years of my life. I, I knew it then. Uh, I know it now. Uh, there's nothing better than being a part of a family, mm. uh, of no one holding, you know, the, the gold star. Everybody did their job. We laughed more than I've ever laughed on anything I've ever yeah. done. And, uh, and there was an, a kind, of, kind of a wonderful socialism that actually worked uh, within that group, except for Dan and and Dick, but you know, they, <laughs> they only came in a couple hours a day. <laughs> um, and uh, so that was it. It was a joyful and wonderful time. One of the people who, who also helped a lot with Goldie was Ruth, because Ruth would stand, remember the sounds you used to make when Goldie was oh, trying yeah, to oh, talk? Oh, yeah, we can't You want to do, do that. that for us no, now? No, no, okay. no, we can't do that. But George, George, yes, you know, darling. if I may add something, if, I don't know, maybe no one's interested, doesn't make any difference, really. But yes, it does. no, no, no. I, I'm just going to tell you how having been on Laughing has affected my life. Okay, it's really wonderful to travel and go places and have everybody. Real, I guess I'm very approachable, and people always, you know, oh, Ruth, wonderful Laughing, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the one thing that it <laughs> did for me is when I travel, and I'm telling you the truth, I have had to clean more lavatories on every airline <laughs> because when I go in and they're dirty, when I come out, I don't want people to think that I did that. Oh, Ruth Buzzy <laughs> from laughing is really dirty. So I've spent these last 20 years cleaning toilets. I do it. Oh, is this true, Alan? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was we, have, we have one over here, okay? Any of you remember any particular lines that always stuck with you that you said that you can't get out of your head, yeah. they keep coming yeah. back? What are they? Um, funny, he doesn't look Jewish? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I had another one. Um, uh, Scotch and Wawa. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> Henry, Henry. I had a line, but it's out of t context. It isn't funny, but there was someone that guessed it on our I show, and we all had to pile into bed, and I had to do this thing in an accent that I had never done before, and somebody coached me, Alan or Artie or something, and it was, and all day long I did it for the whole rest of the week through the microphones and everything. Remember the times you told me you wanted to be an actress? Remember what I say? 
See, she doesn't remember either. Now that's her <laughs> fault. <laughs> I can't get it out of my ear. <laughs> as, as you know, they all had to live with different things, but perhaps one of the most crying experiences was, was Judy because she'd go into restaurants and people would say, ah, bam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd be sitting eating dinner, someone would come over and go, suck it to me, and put bread in my hair. Oh, no. Yeah, I was performing once at a Plaza Hotel in New York, and there's this asshole sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, oh, sorry. <laughs> and it, yeah, and it was a, a boat show was going on in New York, right? So this guy's going, you're doing beautifully, Goldie. <laughs> Now, I really needed to hear that, right? Goldie's <laughs> 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 well, got her Oscar, right? This is, and I let it go for a while, and he finally just goes, give me a cigarette, Goldie. Yeah. I said, look, do I look like a cigarette girl? I said, okay, well, I would have expected more class. This is a Persian room. And so he takes a glass of water and throws it in my face. Oh, God. And I mean, like, I am gorgeous, put together to die for, right, with the oh. hair and the makeup, the lashes go like this, I look like a total prat, <laughs> right? And so I then sort of start to, to try and sing again. My conductor comes down to try and help me, and the guy does it the same to him. So I pick up a pitcher, I mean, a huge <laughs> pitcher, like this, and drown the man, okay? <laughs> no? Yeah. This is a perfect... George, we have a surprise tonight. This is a perfect Judy, example why Judy we had Cohen. great lunches. We have a surprise. Yeah. Judy, that asshole is here tonight behind you. <laughs> He's right, yes, yes, okay. New York. George, let's put, let's put the spotlight on you for a moment. I have a question uh, for you specifically. This group here, this cast of wonderful characters, uh, did you feel more like a father to them, uh, always dishing out parental advice, or did you feel more like an um, ex-husband yes. to them? Uh, what was your relationship a with this cast? father or an ex-husband, yeah. and we have one over here, a vote for dirty old man. Yes. <laughs> so what uh, was it? I loved them, and uh, whatever it was, father, dirty old man, ex-husband, whatever. I loved them, and I love them today. They're just some of the best, warmest, nicest people ever and into every career once this group should come and uh, it was just the best time of my life and I love them. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Uh, I, just a moment I, about, about uh, George being a father. <laughs> Mother was a u word used more frequently. Still is. George was, a, was really a father. I mean he never gave us enough allowance. <laughs> <laughs> if we misbehaved, he sent us to our rooms. <laughs> and he often threatened to keep us at home for the weekend. <laughs> oh, that's great. George, and George, this is an incredible group that you put together. And what, what was it you were looking for when you put them together? What kind of spark, what special quality were you looking for that you found in them? Um, Yes, uh, George. I don't know, magic. Not magic, they, you walk and you see somebody and it's magic. I mean, when, when they walked on stage, we looked at Dick and uh, Dan and we said, hey, it's magic. I mean, and every one of them walked on stage and I could tell you hours of stories that'll bore you and whatever, but every one of them has a moment. Henry, Henry Gibson auditioned with a oh, poem and a backflip. You know, and you went, <laughs> what the hell? And, and uh, every one of them, their stories like that about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, How we got the job. Do oh, you look for well, my well, great Judy? Moment, my great moment is my audition was in a bear costume. That was yeah. how I was to be seen on Laugh Fin. Mm -hmm. uh, really, that's, that's exactly right. what they put me in, in a bear co costume, and I think it was Gordon, the uh, yeah. director. At we the time. fixed that on the next show. <laughs> yes, you did. Oh, yeah. And I want to thank you for making me the only token black on the show. <laughs> 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 and you see, it sort of stuck with me. <laughs> well, and look at this, you're still black today. Oh, <laughs> Dick J. Stalker! <laughs> so much I thought I would stick with it. <laughs> so I went to Australia to make sure I was still a token black. <laughs> yes, Barbara Felden, you're so quiet and pensive and I'd like to know what you're thinking. Oh, well, I'm just enjoying this so much. I only did five of the shows. I think I did the first five shows, right? And then I had to go back to Get Smart. I, I they had to make that decision. And just the indelible impression that those five shows made on me because of the personalities involved 
will remain with me the rest of my life. I really felt as though the women on the shows were my sisters and the boys were my brothers. Mm -hmm. And I can remember um, there would be these long, long sessions doing the uh, party scenes and we'd be exhausted and then there'd be a two hour break and then we would, we would go back to the dressing room. We were sharing a dressing room and we would all just lie on the floor and turn the lights out and go to sleep for two hours. But it was a charming, <laughs> charming experience. <laughs> you got money for that. <laughs> <laughs> this dignified lady you know, came into all of that. Remember the first five characters you did? The first five, I, I, did, I remember the first one, the Girl one Scout. One was the Girl Scout with the troop of hookers. Yeah, the, yeah. I, did a, <laughs> I did a Girl Scout leader who was camping outside Fort Dix. And <laughs> 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 with, 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 with her troop of 28-year-old 20, Girl Scouts and uh, being interviewed and saying that the cookies were moving real fast. <laughs> and George, George read me that script, read me that sketch, and I said, what, what is funny here? I, I never knew what was funny. I always just looked at him blankly and said, well, I'll do it. <laughs> And then the taco tucker. The yeah, <laughs> you do with that whatever George, you will. I didn't get George, that for two years. Yes. George, George's brilliance was how to get a, a joke past the senses. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, this was really a, a trick beyond belief and the games he had to play, right? Now, for instance, um, I was lucky enough to do the first dope joke, which, which of course is really a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why they chose me. Anyway, so what, what he do was like, um, we were dressed as hippies, and George comes to me and says, look, how do these people dress? And I went, okay, the arms, the, the beads, everything. We had all the gear on, you know? And it was Henry and I. And we just walk on camera, right? And I, well, he goes, hi. And I go, you too? <laughs> oh. That was it. The next morning, the censors run into rehearsals, go, George, you're not gonna get away with this. Well, he was furious. My son told me what that meant at breakfast this morning. <laughs> and do you know what George said? I'm worried about your son. <laughs> what, what, what? Uh, George, uh, you're all having a great time here, and obviously the chemistry is still there. Uh, and you all said that if you could turn the clock back, you, you'd think you'd like to all do it over again. But what is it about the medium right now that doesn't seem to really be able to accept this type of a show, a variety show or a, 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 a straight comedy writers. show. Pardon? The writers aren't the same. They're not good. I don't know. Variety I don't mean that. They don't, just don't happen anymore. There are no variety shows no, anymore. Right. No. I miss them. I miss them. But you people have, have, you haven't lost your talent. If nothing else, you've expanded your talent. Uh, there should be some re room someplace for. for can I answer uh, that one? Well, uh, Mr. Stolata, can I answer that one? I, I'll tell you why. <laughs> so far, they have. I'll, I'll tell you why. Yeah. Oh really? God. Because so far, they have forgotten what makes successful hit shows. Whether it's laughing, All in the Family, innovation, the, the dareness to be different, the dareness to bring out new things. We have to go back to the farm system and create the new jokesters of tomorrow, the new singers of tomorrow, the new writers of tomorrow. You can't sit on your laurels. We have too many sitcoms of the same problems which we see all the time. You've got to take the boredom out of television and bring back the newness of the new writers up there coming up in this world. Here, here. Way to go, Tim. Your, your father is so proud. George, incidentally, if uh, you do bring Laffin back, I would be willing to tell Carol to kiss off, so I... <laughs> <laughs> Ever... Somebody said the word censor, and my daughter's over here going. <laughs> George, did anybody ever uh, count up the uh, the number of jokes per show? And could you tell us a little bit about the writing process, how how that all went, and how they learned their learned their material, that sort of thing? Well, stay with learn their material for just a second. <laughs> The writing process was a laborious one, as my friend Mr. Wolf can tell you. It was extensive. The scripts were that thick. We then did the material on stage. Then we then improvised, because as you can tell, these people think on their feet. And we also, part of the writing process, and I'd like to just stop for one second, we had friends that came by that supported us then and support us now that, that made it fun. And I'd just like for you to say hello to some of them here. One of them is Connie Stevens. 
She was there whenever we needed. Come on, Connie. Uh, all right. I worked on a lot of George Slaughter shows. And every time I went to this one, it seemed like I was in the middle of a turmoil in my life. I, w <laughs> I was either running to the side, throwing up, or what have you, and I couldn't wait to go to work because it was the place that I, I felt uh, as hard as we were working, that I felt like I was safe and that whatever I really wanted to do, uh, why I got into this business, I, it all came very true. And the reason I was throwing up at the time, I brought her along. This is my 24-year-old. This is Trisha Lee. I was pregnant all the time on his show. <laughs> you anything to do with... What a pretty lady. We also have some of the other people who are with us and came in and... One, one of our favorite guest stars came by the studio and brought his young son, who is now a dirty old man himself, <laughs> Mr. Buddy Hackett. All right. Uh-oh. No. You don't say anything that Judy wouldn't say. <laughs> I'm from the nightclubs, and I always worked however I felt like working. And when I went on laughing, I found out that you couldn't say get laid eight o'clock at night, and now, 25 years later, I can't do it at four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and I would do it if I remembered why I liked it. <laughs> Another thing was, when you went on that show, you just said to George, I have an idea. He says, just, we'll shoot it, just do it. He didn't even care. And you just did it and did it, and he either used it or he didn't use it. And it, somebody, Digby, got credit for it. <laughs> it was a great feeling. Everybody was nice. It was great to be a guest. You were treated like family. You walked in, everybody was wonderful. And, and I wondered what would ever happen to any of these people, and I'm glad to see they're all better and <laughs> well, and even if they're not in show business. Another gentleman who came on the show, and they had written a, a blackout about uh, uh, one of the girls kissing him. And when we did the blackout, all of the girls lined up in front of me and said, whoa, wait, next, okay? Anyhow, the gentleman who received all of that, Jim Garner. And of course, you have met the lovely and talented Tim Conway, who we would write, write a script and put business to come. Do you want to say anything else? Um, say anything? Yes, about some of the animals you made me work with. Um. <laughs> and of course, one of the prettiest guest stars we ever had on the show, uh, uh, who was glamorous and gorgeous and... Uh, Sexy and everything, and we ought to say hello to him too. Tony Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, I want to know what thing you got past the censors that you're proudest of. <laughs> you must tell the story of. Maria, what do I do now? That's a direct question. As long as it aired. As long as it aired. Well, I think one of my favorites was when Judy was standing there and said, sock it to me, and her wig flew off, and she was there with, you know, and she said, it's the first time I've ever been bald on television. That was, that was certainly one of my favorites, and one of yours, as I recall. <laughs> but there were more. And, and, and if you will meet us outside, Mr. Wolf will regale you with a couple of stories who top that, and they did get on the air. See, it wasn't dirty, it was playful. Yeah. It was dirty. And fast. <laughs> yes, what, um, what? I'd like to ask Alan Seuss how he came to laugh and, and what he did. Um, I met George in New York. I had worked for, with George in uh, Las Vegas. And he said, I'm doing this show laughing. And uh, would I come to the hotel and see it? And he was talking to me. And the guy behind me was playing the Whiff and Poof song <laughs> on, in the bar. And I, I kept going, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Uh -huh. And I thought, have I just screwed myself out of a job, or am I, did I get a job? And then the next thing, I got the job. And it was great for me because uh, I don't have to take part-time work anymore. 
broadcasting at a time when many radio broadcasters were not seen. What kind of response did you get and have you continued to get over the years? Well, it was funny. As George uh, pointed out when, when he gave me that wonderful glowing introduction a few moments ago, uh, I had been hired for the show yes. and we weren't really sure what I was going to do. And so we had gone over to this uh, restaurant, the Smokehouse Restaurant in Burbank, in beautiful downtown Burbank, and uh, well, I had typewriter nerf on my hands from uh, a, an old typewriter ribbon. And so Artie Johnson, George, and Digby Wolf, we, all, we were going to lunch that day, and we went into this tiled bathroom and I, as a satire on the 1940 announcers, because I never did announce that way until the show. I put my hand over my ear and said, uh, my, the acoustics are good in here. And George said, that's what I want you to do on the show. And I said, you want me to wash my hands? And he said, no, no, I, you know, be this announcer who would act as a transition in between things. So if there's anyone else here with any talent, I'll meet you in the men's room. <laughs> the men's room. In about, <laughs> what, what, some, yes. George, how difficult was it to chase down guests? Did they, uh, did you find they were calling you? Um, you had Billy Graham on it. You had some phenomenal people on. Well, he for came Black on to try to help. <laughs> <laughs> Would they be well, calling you and say, please put me on? In the beginning, Dick, in the beginning, we had to call and get people and whatever. But then after a while, uh, I remember Jack, was it Jack Lemon went home and his kid said, you're nothing? That was Kirk Douglas, right. Well, Kirk Douglas, too. Kirk said uh, that uh, I'm, I want to do some cameos because these two kids will kill me if I don't. And those two kids today are Peter and Eric who are big producers and, so and the jungle, amazing. Wasn't, wasn't Jack yeah. Lemon's kid said but to him, if you were a star, you'd be on Laugh. You have to remember that there were, H, there were quite a few shows aired before, I mean, uh, shot before they were aired. So I, I'll never forget Douglas Fairbanks Jr. Uh, is staring at us, because he was doing cameos, <laughs> and he said, well, what's funny about that? And he had no idea what he was doing. And neither did Mr. Wayne, really. A lady by the name of Carolyn Raskin, and I won't go into it now, but developed most of the modern editing, editing techniques because laughing was impossible to do. And Mr. Schlosser cleaned out the whole basement of NBC Burbank where we had machines. And she developed many of the editing processes which now today have become electronic. But it was mm -hmm. an impossible job and she did it and I wish she was here. Mm. You know how, is Carolyn not here? I don't think so. Because remember how she used to be up at the top and keep her script out on a podium kind of, you know? Yeah. And the first day I was on Laugh-In, the first time we, on a Wednesday when, or whatever that day is when we'd all be up in the, we could go wander in and out of the bleachers. Uh, Henry came up and set fire to her script. And I watched it just go up and smoke, you know? I was and I thought it was inspiration like... inspiration for a poem. I... <laughs> <laughs> and, and they kept thinking that Henry's poems were dirty. And they said, what does that mean? What was the one about a nooner or something? I don't know. <laughs> have we got any more questions? Because if not, we're going to have a bite to eat. And I just want to thank you all for the, really this... You know, when you go into one of these things, you're a little bit nervous. How's it going to go? But you've just been wonderful with us. You've really been fun. And we hope you have a nice dinner. Bye.